Oh my goodness. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the RPG Exploration Society. Uh, my name is Rich, and I am going to be your guide and game master as we explore Dune, Adventures in the Imperium, the RPG by Mendifius Games. I'm so excited uh, not just to be playing this game, but to have the fortune to play it with this fantastic group of folks with a hard copy of the book. <laughs> ah, so jelly! <laughs> On hand. So nice. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, this has been a really fun learn to play experience so far. And we have so far done our houses. We've created our characters. And for the next three weeks, we're going to be doing some adventuring. Um, we've got oh my, oh, these characters. We're going to start with some big introductions and move in. Um, but first, I guess, before we get into that, to the, the details, let's introduce our team uh, one more time here for episode three. Um, first up, we have uh, the wonderful Eliza. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Good. Excellent. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we also have B. Welcome again. Oh, gosh. With, hello, um, hello. This is just like the normal work look, yeah? <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, I didn't yeah. just spend five to ten minutes trying to smush something inside of my nose. Totally <laughs> cash. That is, that is the, the level of commitment that I, I'm in awe right now. That is, that is wonderful. Oh, wow. Um, all right. And Cohen, welcome again. I'm so excited Even. to see you here. <laughs> How are you doing? Doing absolutely fantastic. Yes. Doing good. Great. It's been two weeks since I got my second vaccination. I'm yes. feeling good. It's inoculated in me, baby. Yes. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Science does its dark work, and I am safe <laughs> for another year. Wow. Mm -hmm. you, you got That sounds just like a men's hat. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm in it. I'm in it. You just say um, whatever comes to mind. No filter, baby. Excellent. Full autism. Let's go. Let's do it. Verisimilitude. <laughs> Your 5G is going to be great. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, Teos, how are you doing? I, uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I am so excited to be a doctor on yes. TV-ish. <laughs> so I'm yeah. um, yeah. very happy to be here. Oh. <laughs> Joining the long line of TV doctors. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think about my favorite TV doctor, and I'm going to find out by the end of this, you know, where you rank on that scale. Um, <laughs> where do you see yourself? No pressure. Uh, <laughs> like above Doctor House or like yeah. below Doctor Strange? I, you know, mm. uh, let's, measurement should be in, in, in uh, cubic centimeters of mm. poison. So uh, I think I'm going to go Wow. Wow. I think so. I think so. <laughs> um, and uh, and looking over to the dark corner of our screen today, uh, we're having a couple tech issues, and we hope Justin can join us uh, a little bit later on in the stream. Um, perfect. Well, right here at the start, um, I just want to let you know a couple things as we get started. First, we already have a toast um, uh, here from a Five Foot Latina. Hey, Poshies. I love that. <laughs> Have fun on your totes casual, definitely unofficial, spontaneous vacay on Arrakis. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Wonderful. I know. I know. We've got, is anyone wearing sunscreen already? I don't know how deep these costumes are going. Um. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, fair. Who cool. do you take me for? Yeah, we're lucky we're I on. showered today. That's just because you. you're method and they don't shower on Arrakis. So, you know. Yes, that's why. Right. Yeah. right. Mm, you got to mm -hmm, save that water. Mm -hmm. You're so committed to your craft. I'm, yes. I'm in awe. No it's water great. on Arrakis, no water <laughs> on my body. Mm -mm. Not, not for three more weeks. Ever? Right. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is going on. We are doing a giveaway of the Dune RPG. We've got three copies of the PDF by Modifius Games uh, ready for you out there. Uh, throughout the course of this episode, you can follow Saving Throw here on Twitch. And, um, and then you have to type in like exclamation mark and then raffle and then a number from one to 10 to get some tickets in there. At the end of the show, we will raffle off three copies of the RPG. Uh, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's got great art, a huge world, and it's, so far as I'm concerned, it's a fantastic game. <laughs> uh, we're going to convince you of that for the next uh, two hours. <laughs> um, I think I think that's all I got here at the start of the show. Yeah, yeah. Whew. This is it. I I I'm excited. We've been like playing around with creation yeah, and everything else. Let's do this. But I've been waiting for the adventure. I've been waiting. <laughs> yes. Um, and here. Here we get going, because last time we, we began with a brief intro, the glimpse, the first glimpse uh, of our dear leader, um, 
Guy Fieri Spice, head chef of the House of Posh, uh, who gave us a brief mission. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> Monstrosity Jones, the cumin must flow. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, that feels a lot like we're we're up to. Like, <laughs> we will grind you. The cumin must flow. <laughs> the cumin must flow. <laughs> That's good. Um, let's see. Uh, before we get started, I, I've got to tell you a couple things about just beginning an adventure in Dune, of course. Um, you decided that uh, because you wanted to play a big and powerful house, um, you were going to be a major house, right? You're a, you're a power in the universe, right? And that means me over here just sitting back, getting ready to run an adventure with all of you. I get to take two threat counters and add them to my pool as we start the game. Um, I can use those threat to add all sorts of shenanigans, make my NPCs more difficult to fight, have your enemies show up. Um, you know, just make my uh, fighters last longer, all sorts of things. Um, you all have momentum, and except the, you know, at the moment you don't. Um, but hey, if you want to get the benefits of momentum, just throw me some threat. You know, it'll, uh, it'll give you the same benefit. It'll just come back to haunt you later. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty fair trade, I think. Um, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. Reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, let's get into it. Let's begin. You had last time. Uh, Giselnica had received this invitation um, to meet with Guy Fieri Spice um, here in the center, right in the rack, the, the the core of your planet of Spice World. It was this ridiculous building. It was this this favored restaurant where only the the a powerful and elite around the galaxy are able to come in, and you got to go in alone and eat some food at the side of the head chef, uh, and in return. He asked you to go on a vitally important mission. Um, a mission that is, well, you just can't make it seem important, right? It's important, but like, all right. Gotta um, play it cool. Gotta play it cool because we really want this, but if we, you know, seem like it, then we're not gonna get it. Um, and that mission was to go on a survey of Arrakis. Uh, not just you, it's the, the Empire is sending five houses to go and kind of check it out. Survey the place, decide if you your house will have the power to manage part of the spice production there. And if so, maybe you'll get some. Who knows? But this is your chance to get in and do some research, and Guy Fieri Spice wants it. So um, with that, we, we kind of paused and said, you know, of course, montage style. Who do you got in mind? And as the, the music starts playing, Jaselnica heads out to go and meet with our various party members and bring them on board the team. Um, so uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit off stream, but uh, we wanted some good montage scenes. Who feels ready? Who is Who would Jaselnica go to first? Where's your first point of call here, do you think? Well, it does depend on who I think would be the most ready. And I'm looking around at the group. Uh, I think it's going to be Dr. Yuan I would go to <laughs> first. OK. Right, so the good doctor uh, has uh, been visiting a friend from school. It's a, a fellow, well, this one is a graduate. I'm a near graduate uh, of the Sixth School of Doctors. And um, how, how do you contact me? Uh, how does Jaselnica contact me? Um, I think I would uh, put in a a communication to I think probably just to you directly. So when I receive this message, um, I would uh, just be finishing up my, my lovely talk with my good old colleague. Um, I'd probably turn and, and walk away from the room as they sort of stumble and, and look at the glass that they're holding and, and wonder, could it really be? And, and they say something like, uh, are we not friends? And I say, indeed, indeed, we are. This is why. And they tumble to the ground, glass spills and shatters. And then I walk out the room to go meet with you. Ooh, ooh. Okay, wow. Yeah. Hey, let's, so, cool. okay. <laughs> this seems like you've gone through quite a challenge here, right, Teos? I mean, that's, uh, you, <laughs> is it, do you feel... Uh, do you feel at all about this? What feelings come to you? <laughs> um, it's it's unfortunate that this person was was looking into uh, what how the 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 circumstances of my not graduating, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I had to meet with them to sort of 
clean up some loose ends because I did truly like them and it's a shame. Yeah. Uh, but I use my sick conditioning to quickly cease caring about them. I see. I see. I see. Well, let's let's take a look at this. Like, if we want to think about this action mechanically, I love it narratively. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Let's say uh, let's say we did want to poison someone using the two D twenty system here in Dune, and um, and make this event happen. Um, seems pretty interesting. And since this is a learn to play, I want to dive in and chat about it a little bit. Um, right? Which of our, your skills do you think would would take care of this poison or poisoning uh, yeah so i think that i would probably use my uh communication to to get them into a sense of complacency oh okay all right i like that plan um right it's because it is you're not doing a, a very physical attack you're just getting them into this moment where they are ready and they just drink this uh this glass of wonder juice right um okay perfect um and on that same note, right? Anytime we make a roll, we've got a skill and we also have a drive. Which drive is driving you right now? Uh, my drive is uh, for truth. It is okay. the, the truth of, of uh, what, what should be the truth around my illustrious career and the, the sad challenge that I faced in not being able to finish school. Okay, okay. Well, for a lot of folks, I think this would be a pretty challenging task, right? Um, maybe something like a difficulty too. But you, of course, are are trained in this. You have traits like soup doctor, right? I mean, poison is is in your wheelhouse. Um, it's a, it's right there. You have it as a focus in understanding, right? When you are studying them. Um, so if you were doing this uh, in in the game, right? We would want to make a two d twenty check, and uh, the difficulty would be two normally, but because of your trait, it's going to drop down to just one, which means you need to get a single success on two dice. We um, do have an asset of Chamas and Chamurki. Chamurki being the one for drink. Is it Chamurki, Chamurki. I don't know. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very well. So very good. Uh, so having the asset definitely makes it possible. You can't poison someone if you don't have a poison. Um, mm -hmm. So otherwise, you'd have to go find one around the room or something. Uh, yeah. But you have it. Uh, the trait is is giving you this bonus, so dropping the difficulty by one. Um, and now you need to roll 2d20. And the target number you have is your skill plus your drive. Um, and for you, I believe that is a total of, with a six communicate and a truth of eight, 14. And uh, I rolled in front of me, but I guess I could have used roll 20, and I can do that uh, in the future or now if you'd like. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, I'll take either one. What did you get? Uh, I got a 7 and a 10. 7 and a 10. Very nice. Um, both of those are successes, so that is two successes right away for the group. Um, uh, it only needed one, so of course, just as you describe, your companion falls to the ground, glass tinkling away. And not only that, but you got more successes than you needed. You gain one momentum as a group. <laughs> uh, you can only have six yeah. maximum, so feel free to spend them. Um, there's lots of ways to spend them. We'll chat about as we get moving. Very cool. So the, the doctor steps out. You know, a little scene of a little light assassination in the distance. <laughs> um, Aliza, your character, right? So we, we, we talked a little bit about your characters we introduced you last time. Um, how, how are you approaching this? Are you already decked out, like ready to go on mission? Are you uh, taking it as a careful, canny diplomat? Like what's your, what's your thought Oh, here? I'm always decked out in my Bene Gesserit robes. Mm -hmm. So okay. just like really high, fabulous <laughs> headdress with like embedded jewels and things in the front and full, yeah, just full black robes looking fabulous and mysterious nice. and intriguing. <laughs> Um, Excellent. And yeah, so I, I guess I would, though, have to probably stop by my living space and pick up a few things. Um, and I imagine that, yes, on my way to my living space, I have messaged all of uh, th this potential party separately um, mm -hmm. on my way over to my living space. And I Excellent. said probably, I, I probably would tell them all to meet me at, meet me at our spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so the doctor is getting the message uh, to meet you at the spot. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So after a little light assassination is out the door with this note in hand, um, gathering your belongings and heading to the spot. My goodness. Um, uh, Teos, when you hear the spot, where, where are you thinking? Where, where's the spot to you? <laughs> Oh, 
You were there. We I go. I like the idea of not being <laughs> muted. Uh, <laughs> what if it's a kind of crystalline tower that um, has uh, around it like a low shelf, glowing with with little drift globes, and each uh, uh, scattered across the shelf are all kinds of different comestibles and beverages that we provide. Oh, and, and then there's lounge like chairs there we can all gather. So we're inspired by our creations that yes. start does to navigate. It, does this nice. crystalline structure look like a salt shaker? Just just wondering. Does it look like a giant salt shaker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it's not made out of like pink Himalayan salt, yeah. <laughs> it has to. It's just slowly <laughs> snowing with pink Himalayan salt in the whole oh, area. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> <It's> casual. <laughs> you know, like you gotta yeah, tell yeah. Chris, yeah. don't lick the building. No, please don't lick the building. Please yeah. don't. So many people lick that spot. You don't want to. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, wow. Okay, so you head that direction, of course, to the spot where things will happen very shortly. Um, where, I say, gets, I say yeah, sorry, pack a bag, going to Arrakis, meet me at the spot. <laughs> it's like very vague, but giving them a little bit Arrakis. more details to go, go on. Gotcha, gotcha. Most interesting. Very nice. All right. Where does your message head next? Across the uh, winds of Spice World, where do they land? <laughs> I, I mean, I think the next person who gets it is whoever looks more ready. Okay. Uh, uh, Drohai is the next person who receives that <laughs> alert. All right. So do I, set, I can set the scene? Rich? Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. I am uh, standing at a... Uh, I'm standing behind a uh, one of our advertisements. You know how they have those uh, those things on like on the streets. There's like like a, like at bus stops, like they're the advertisements. It's an advertisement for like a a spicy show. Uh, sure. I'm watching. I'm watching my watch. Looking at my watch. Looking at my watch. Tons of cars going by in every direction. Big conveyors of spice. Uh, you know uh, those tanker trucks with sauce in them super busy but also tons of people going across the intersection there's like a back and forth trucks people trucks people so it's a delicate dance everything's perfect it's like a well-trained serving staff everything is going where is it supposed to go i look at my watch until at precisely the right moment i look up and i yell chris chris <laughs> and somebody who was crossing the street turns in confusion, recognizes me, and then is just annihilated by a truck full of sauce. <laughs> so. ah, just a little bit of light assassination. Ah. All right. <laughs> right on time. What, what kind of sauce was it? Uh, well, whatever what, kind, what kind it was, of sauce was it? it is going to have to be thrown out now. I think probably. so. Probably. Because oh, oh. Chris, mm -hmm. Chris mm -hmm. has made cross contamination. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably, okay. hopefully something, hopefully something acidic that will probably help with all of the Chris <laughs> that's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But oh um, my goodness! As as his as his body is kind of thrown and like hey! tumbled and mangled, an envelope slides out of his slides out of his uh it was up his, it was like his pocket slides out and hits me in the feet and I pick it up and I'm like, what am I? Like? All right, kiss. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Uh, been done. This is uh, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy who's been trying to get me back into twisted mintat stuff, trying to get me to do twisty mintat stuff for the house, which I'm not super thrilled yeah, about. Yeah. But it's like once I get the summons, I'm like, okay. I mean, I do want to go to <laughs> Arc. You know, you don't. You know, nobody ever wants to go to Arrakis, but everybody mm -hmm. eventually has to go to Arrakis. It's like, right, right. Yeah, it's like it's like a it's like an international airport. It's like the way oh, it is. God, this is going to be <laughs> a, an ordeal. So mm -hmm. I, I make off for the big salt shaker. Uh, um, having read the having read the message, I uh, shred it and uh, just just it's gone because I rip it out. Just remember forever. Okay. Perfect. I got two things. The first is hello, Justin, and welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this will be my sound check. Am I sounding okay? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, then I'm here for for this week. I've been having. A I can fair see you on the screen. <laughs> Justin, I hope, I hope you bought a murder. I hope you bought a murder <laughs> because we've been doing murders. Um, 
You're just going oh, around. I don't know. Yeah. That. Am I a murderer or do I like have other people murder for me? <laughs> we, we've got a little like, time to decide. Ooh, you tell us. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, Cohen, I am curious because this this is a good move. I like it. It's very in keeping with your character. You have a lot of traits that follow this path, right? But uh, but what you've described sounds a little bit tricky. So uh, mm -hmm. so let's do a roll for this just to see how it goes. Make sure everything we got the kinks worked out here, right? Um, mm -hmm. First off. I think this is an easy one. What skill are you using to I analyze using... the traffic patterns? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it is it is that it is data analysis is Absolutely. what I'm using. I know the traffic patterns. <laughs> I know the habits of my enemy of my former uh, handler. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, if he dies and I don't tell anybody. I will have a, like at least a couple of weeks off, which is now apparently <laughs> going to be spent in the on in in the desert, in the desert mm -hmm. wastes of right. Arrakis. Uh, so yeah, that's a data analysis, and then a, it's a drive, right? Right. So so definitely right. This is an understand skill, and you are focused in it, which means you're going to succeed a lot. So perfect. Um, yeah. What drives you to do this? Um, honestly, power. <laughs> the weakness of my enemies is my for is an inspiration. He should have. Who who turns around in the middle of a street? And the answer is <laughs> most people. Uh, <laughs> right, but you use their weakness against them. I like it a lot. Exactly. All right, I so can't that help sounds them. like what. No, of course not. Um, that sounds like what we're looking at here is is a difficulty of fourteen. Right, your power of seven plus your understand of seven. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that, I mean, what you're doing is complicated. Again, I would, I would feel like this is a challenging task. However, um, <laughs> you are trained in exactly this, right? You are an analyst. That is one of your traits. So we're going to drop the difficulty again down to one. Um, also, I would like yes. to use Mintat Discipline, if I may. Oh, yes. Tell uh, me more. You have almost perfect recall for even the most complex data. When making an understand test that applies to recalling data, one of the D20s in your pool may be considered to have rolled a one instead of rolling it. Perfect. OK, so this is really good. Um, right, all of us have mom Well, OK. Yes, <laughs> let's do this, and then I'll explain those things. This okay. is so good. So basically, one of your dice, you get to just set it to one. It's already a critical success, which means you get two successes. Um, because you are focused in data analysis as well, as long as you succeed with your other D20, you will get two more successes. Like this is this is your deal. This casual traffic killing that you've just done, it's like mm -hmm. your deal. <laughs> I it, I've, I never, but I never kill a handler in the same way twice. <laughs> okay, good, good to know. No. Um, let's see. I uh, I heard a beep, but I haven't checked roll twenty yet. Uh, what did you get on that uh, D20? Oh, look, sorry. Um, no, you're fine. I've got a four and then my guaranteed one. So that is four successes on what we needed a single success for. Um, that is three more points of momentum. We are starting this scene charged Ooh. up. I like it. Um, stuff that we can do with momentum, by the way, you can spend one to just roll an extra d20. Oh. If a task is really hard, you can do that. If you take two more away, you get to roll a, a fourth d20. And if there are six and you take away all six of them, you get to roll five d20. Um, on any task, so difficult things are are possible with that. And again, you can just give me threats instead of spending momentum if you have to, um, which is very nice. Um, the other things you can do with momentum, I think one of the most important ones is you can just ask questions. You can just spend uh, a momentum, just toss it away and be like, tell me the thing I want to know, storyteller. Stop like hiding it. Just tell me the truth. <laughs> um, and I love that because it means, you know, if you're hung up in a place you don't know where to go next, you can really just ask, you know, get big clues that way. It's what momentum is all about. Cool. Nicely done. So uh, so a defeat, well, a success um, for Drohai, and then heading away, uh, gathering some belongings, maybe, and then heading to the I travel salt light. shaker. <laughs> I just have my, my uh, Irulithian crystal book and my uh, addictive brain juice and my weird rope <laughs> that I still have. Of I'm course, not, of course. Yeah, I should not be allowed anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why you're you're kind of back of house, right? Not yeah. uh, not up front, you know, but trusted for a mission just like this one. Yeah. All right. Um, 
just making sure uh, we've got Justin with a little bit of time to get settled. I'm gonna I'm gonna move it over. I think the wind of the message heads over to meet uh, our Fremen friend. <laughs> Parmoon is in the center hub of what was like the center area of like Spice World. Like I know it was like this big. The rack? The rack. Industrialized. <laughs> the rack. Was it not? Was it the not? God, yeah. The rack. Because I was about to say, did we name, did we just name it Flavor Town? But I'm glad we were I'm glad we were better than that. I think. <laughs> we thought, I yeah, we had a big brain move on that one. Flavor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Too obvious. laughs> exactly. Yeah, far too obvious. We're not about that. Uh, <laughs> not us. Um so Parmoon is kind of sneaking and like stepping to like um like shadow to shadow behind people behind cars going through alleys um you know avoiding really bright lights trying to sidle up to the person that they have to make a deal with okay and you know the camera kind of like catches them in different angles as we get to see a little bit of the rack you know we see some of the industrial area we see some of the really big tall glass buildings um we see like the people interacting on the street and everybody is kind of zesty you know everybody just has a little bit of a zesty vibe to them and then the camera kind of zooms in a little bit and parmoon is in a dark alley with a couple of like crates and somebody steps out from the shadows and they are wearing all black um nothing really remarkable about them their face is covered um and they look at parmoon and they're like you you got the stuff and Parmoon reaches into their still suit and instead of pulling out spice, because they are in fact a smuggler, they pull out a tiny sandworm and whip it at this man's face. Um, <laughs> he starts freaking out like, what are you, what are you doing to me? Um, and while he's flailing, Parmoon is going to try to rob him blind for all of his money and out of a courtesy, leave a little bit of spice and pick up that little baby sandworm spicy poop and be on their way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. I love it. I love it. Um, wow. There's some good questions about what kind of zest we are in the chat, and I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Well, it depends so... on who you ask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Very if, true. If, if people think they know, that's just when we mix it up, you know, oh, right wow. now. That's the moment. <laughs> the gotcha, aftertaste. Gotcha. Surprising well, top notes. Those kind of sommelier words. Oh, the tannin. Oh, the ooh. Only one I know. Watch I out for know. our tannins, yeah. <laughs> Watch out yeah, for our yeah. tannins. Real good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, let's let's jump into this. Let's think about this. What's um so if we want to make a check on this one, I guess we have a couple options because you've got kind of two things you're doing in this. There's the the quick fight and there's also the quick move. And move is kind of all sorts of quickness to it. So I think even the mm -hmm. the grabbing belongings could uh could fit as part of move. Um what sounds like good? Which which one should we do or focus on right now? Oh, let's start with move. I don't actually have any focuses on that, but I selfishly want to use a momentum since we are racking them up kind of mm -hmm. quickly. You are yeah. indeed. Um, now, you, I will totally say, you've got something great going on. You have this entire moment, right? You've brought them in here. You've got them in, their, in your trap for sure. Um, and you, I mean, is this something, well, actually, let me, let me ask that. I'm totally fine with move. That makes a lot of sense. Why are you doing mm -hmm. this? What is the drive behind it? I don't believe this person is worthy of the spice. Um, Shai Halud is the one who decides who gets the spice and who does not. And that guy, mm -mm, I'm not selling to him. I like Are it. You kidding me? So this, this is an act of faith, is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, perfect. In that case, right? You, of course, you, one of your personality traits is zealotry this is your deal so uh so having a trait mm -hmm. on board means that you are are decreasing the difficulty of this action this is perfect i'm learning so much about nice. everyone right now um, <laughs> um <laughs> is this complicated i mean absolutely you've you've got people kind of you know moving around getting into the right spot tricking them doing this quick action i think um yeah i think this is going to be a difficulty too again let's do it um so okay. with your trait, it's going to drop by one. You're spending a momentum, um, which means you get to roll 3d20s. 
Um, and your faith plus move, I believe, is 15. I mean, this is what you do. You're a faith mover. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That is two successes. Very nice. I, I really like rules. A quick ad for roll 20. Roll 20 does this very well, and I really like how it rolls on here, giving you successes and oh, failures right? really easily. Yeah. Good. And it's, it's good. color coded. I know. I need me some nice. colors because I don't want to look at the numbers. Yeah. And it, it asks you to kind of roll in the same way that we are. Like, what skill? Okay, what's driving that skill? And it's, yeah. it's exactly how I want it. So very it's very cool. good. It's really nice. So, so two successes would have been exactly what you needed. But of course, you are a zealot. So we get an extra one in there. So you gain that momentum back. So we are back up to four. Um, and nice. absolutely succeed running off uh, with your ill-gotten goods. I mean, well-gotten goods, let's be honest. <laughs> and uh, and run off into the distance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, receiving the note uh, soon thereafter. And uh, yeah, do you need to get anything? You, it sounds like you take your, your sandworm with you everywhere. Oh, yeah. Me and spicy okay. poops go everywhere together. Spicy poops is always around. OK. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let's My see. My grandmother um, had that cross stitched over the mantle. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, last up, of course, uh, Justin. We we have to tell the story of of how this uh, message gets to one Agent Brad Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like so, to say your full name. <laughs> uh, yeah, Agent Brad Montana. Oh, wait. I have to get into care. Agent Brad Montana here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm awake now. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, <laughs> uh, Brad Montana, well, you you know, he's, he's pr too, probably tooling about in his ornithopter. Uh, oh, sure. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. Um, he, he is a strategist and he has, he has, he has, he has a, a focus in, in, in Canley. So he is flying and he is, he is taking out uh, some vendetta on a smaller family that's trying to, to rise up. And he's flying over them with uh, manure underneath his ornithopter. And he's uh -huh. going to drop it out on one of their dignitaries as they go out towards a, a meeting. Oh and my this is gosh! His, this is his. This is his idea. He's he's uh, he, he 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 doesn't want them. And this is all him. This is all he wasn't told by anyone. He's doing this on his own. He thinks this is the uh -huh. right move, uh, and it's going to bode well for him in the long run. And nothing bad could possibly happen. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, a good plan. Wow. Okay. So is this um because it is one of the rival houses, right? You're saying yeah. um. I feel like because you're here on Spice World, it's maybe not one of your rivals, but you do control three other spices, right? Yeah. Um, is it one of them? What do we have? We have, oh gosh, Ginger Spice is in charge of farming. Was that it? Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, had, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe it's someone I think is acting up out at, at Ginger Spice's uh, farm. So I'm trying to- I see, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to curry some favor with, with Ginger Spice by taking care curry of her. Curry some favor? Oh, I, I picked my words purposely. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, well, this sounds uh, I, not not to take spot, not to talk out of turn. Complicated is that fine? Um, yeah. I yeah, feel I like it. this is this is a daunting task, yeah. right? You are you are going in with the, with your thopter uh, above. You're trying to drop this directly on someone from yeah. up above. I mean, pigeons work really hard for what they do. They do. Um, so let's call this daunting. That means it's a difficulty three. Yeah. Um, Talk to me about your, uh, let's see, skill for this one. Um, well, well, clearly. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, uh, on my sheet, I have Canly associated with battle. Okay. So, uh, so I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking battle. I'm in. And, Sounds uh, good. And uh, you know, uh, as far as my drive, it's my drive to see justice served on okay. Spice World. I love it. All right. So. <laughs> You're going in. Uh, both of those are wonderful fours. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest. Uh, one of your traits is risk taker, and that is definitely coming up now. So we're going to drop that difficulty down to two. Um, you've only got a target number of eight. Not great odds, but no, you have two great. D20s to, uh, to get two successes. Do you want to buy any more with momentum? To, to get two successes? I thought, oh, I, oh, it reduces the... 
because this is risk taking, it reduces my successes down by one. Got it. From three to two, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. You know what? We have we have a lot of that fancy extra dice actions. So you got four. Uh, oh, we have Do a good it. amount. I'm gonna yeah. burn one of those. All right. So that's three d twenty. And so that gets me successes. an extra dice. And then mm -hmm. so I'm I'm walking through this. I'm clicking on my sheet. I'm doing a battle roll. And I'm using which drive, and so I'm you said go. justice. Yeah, I did because I'm I'm serving justice, and I'll, I'll submit that. Of course, that. and then a total of uh, three dice because I'm using our momentum. Exactly. And I'll go ahead and I'll submit this uh, using focus. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, that's true. So now anything eight or better will be two successes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. Woo. So it seems like things went well. <laughs> wow that is a total of four successes um you only needed two so that takes wow. our momentum all the way up to five uh the yeah. the uh um oh my gosh uh the the dung package um yeah. <laughs> you are dropping with your thopter lands perfectly um Operation pigeon and I would say that because you're using battle I mean this is this doesn't sound like a silent maneuver right you're letting oh, no. people know what's happening yeah yeah um so <laughs> you like stick your head out and wave your hat around or you Whee! whooping it up as you go flying past, right? <laughs> so they, they look up at just the perfect time and it's just all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. I uh I would give you inspiration, but it's the wrong game. You know. Oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> but beautifully done. Um I thought you were going to mess that one up. So very <laughs> I, nice work. I, you know? I mean, here's the thing is I did purposely pick my two lowest. I know. Just, <laughs> I just know. to give me even more of a chance of messing it up because, I, you know, we yeah. haven't messed anything up as far as right. I have seen thus far. So right. I, was, I was I was trying to uh, I, I was being a risk taker. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's it's good if you choose those. If you do things that you're focused in on those low ones, you still have good odds of success because, you you know, explode yeah. those successes so nicely done gonna have to take things a little harder from now on <laughs> up that difficult no, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes um <laughs> fantastic come on Rich. well in that case do you land like right on the salt shaker do you like you know yeah no, not. no 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 not on, not on just there's a helipad next to the salt shaker mm. oh of course yeah and i just i just park there and the group arrives um all of them getting together here at the salt shaker but leaving a moment for uh Giselle to make an entrance um i feel like you've gotten a little uh a little short here uh short shrift i suppose because we gave everyone montage scenes but as Giselle arrives before the group you have currently the personal favor of guy fieri spice right you were sent with this mission perfectly how do you set it up <laughs> Okay, well, I walk in and I see everyone gathered at our spot. And I walk in very majestically. You all are used to me making an entrance. I, I tend to be a little dramatic in the way I move myself because I want to show people, you know, that I am an important diplomat and envoy for this house. So I walk in, almost float in with my robes billowing behind me. And I look at everyone and I say, I see you all have decided to take this adventure with me. I bet you have many questions. But first, let me answer this. Yes, I did dine at backstage <laughs> with head chef Guy Fieri himself. <laughs> Fieri Spice. What? It is true. <laughs> That's hmm. what... Well... I, I just don't know what to do about that. That's amazing. Uh, I, got, I, I, you know, I once saw Guy Fury Spice from across the 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 the, the courtyard, and and I, I I waved at him, and I think he looked in my direction, kinda. But you ate with him. Yes. Oh, man, it was Ooh. an otherworldly experience. Oh. What did they serve? Oh, they served jumbo lump crab meat. <laughs> 54 aqua snakes and I inhaled all the lettuce that was presented to me. <sighs> so the rumors about wow. Guy Fieri's shellfish allergy were false. Well, I see. Uh, I was I'll able have to, to adjust my plants. Something that helps with with that. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> yes. No, I wasn't sorry, I wasn't trying to no sell your your 
incredible pull. I just want to out of character acknowledge Jesus. That was a great pull. That was <laughs> well done. Uh, sorry, yeah, to absolutely. <laughs> well done. Surely your Excellent. fortune favors all of us, lady. Indeed it does, because he has sent me to gather my preferred crew, which is you all, to accompany me. Well, we will all accompany each other to Arrakis to uh, put in our bid very casually to potentially market in that spice and add that to our rack, if you will. Oh, well, <laughs> the good stuff. We're mm -hmm. finally moving up in the world. All right. Exactly. Okay. We might have to stick around here a little longer. Were you planning on leaving? No. Just even better mm. reasons to stay than I, the ones I already had. Armin, you know uh, me. We see. We'll be keeping wow. an eye on you. How's spicy poops? Doing good? Uh, fantastic. And like, I'll pull like two poops <laughs> of my shirt. I uh. Uh, guess. Why <laughs> they are? Would you like there. to hold them? Oh, <laughs> I I don't think I should. I would hate to. Um, I would hate for you know. I would hate to be a. You know what? I'm gonna just say it. I'd hate to be bitten by a sandworm. I'm just gonna say. Oh, it is yeah. not a great feeling. It happens no. frequently. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Oh. Okay. Okay. How? Right. Wait. What size is uh, spicy boobs? <laughs> like just for like my own sake, probably this size. Like size of a hand oh very tiny they're very small Aww. oh yeah they are a baby they were born like three days ago <laughs> wow <laughs> do we know i actually i'm gonna ask this in character do we know how fast sandworms grow well i reckon they grow uh you know about as fast as anything else Okay, so that that, that wow. spicy poops isn't going. You to know that's it. like not an answer, right? <laughs> like I know you're, you're a very well defined. You're a brilliant ornithopter pilot, but I, I don't know why you keep throwing yourself into the ring on stuff like this. I literally remember data. They sent me to school for twenty years. It's all I know is how to say things I've seen already. Well, you see, here, Joe, I, I I just don't like leaving a question open. Um, you know, them silences. That's fair enough. They make fair me enough. uncomfortable. Fastest yes and <laughs> noticed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, yeah, beautiful. you do not have to worry about the sandworms. Not at least the ones that I possess, though I will be gathering a bunch from Arrakis to bring them back here. Uh, you know, for regular smuggling purposes. Sure, we all got our side gigs, yeah. You know, this mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. buddy of mine, he used to have like a reptile and the reptiles grew really big, but he had a pet reptile mm. and he put it in an aquarium and it didn't grow so big. I wonder if you could do that with a sandworm. <laughs> like make it not grow uh, so big with an aquarium. <laughs> I will take that upon consideration, Montana. <laughs> Come to me anytime. I got ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know. We do. We, we, we do. Excellent, excellent. Uh, as you chat, um, you, you hear a noise, and uh, and there is definitely kind of coming uh, nearby and coming towards your helipad where your ornithopter is. Uh, a little bit of a larger transport here from uh, from the Spacers Guild is is dropping down, uh, not quite landing or anything, staying out of the city, but uh, close enough that your ornithopter could head up to it for sure. Um, you hear that noise and things go dark for just a second and you look up and you realize a shadow has fallen across the salt shaker. Uh, you look up to the top of it and you see the spikes of Guy Fieri's, you know, traditional hairstyle. And uh, there is a quick thumbs up <laughs> before it all goes away. Um, and I suppose with the blessings of Guy Fieri spice on your side. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. The, spa the Spacers Guild waiting. Um Brad Montana, is uh, is your ornithopter large enough for f five people? Well, I reckon it is. Um, they 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 didn't really say much about sizes. So then yes, <laughs> I uh, you know I did pick a small one, but I figured even a small one should be able to hold five people or six people. Sounds or good. We'll, Sounds we'll good. be cramped. It's fine. But if I somebody's <laughs> gonna have to get close to spicy poops though, so sorry y'all. <laughs> That's all Excellent. right. Spicy poops can ride up front with me. All I'm right. Fine. Well, oh, okay. Yes. 
<laughs> there's there's a little knob on that uh, that'll just get un unspooled constantly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Aww, Sandworm on the top, yeah. spinning it around. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, in that case, I mean, it doesn't take you long to gather your belongings and get into the thopter. Um, heading up and into the ship itself. Um, how many of your characters, I mean, training is often off world. Is, do, have any of you bit, lived your entire lives on Spice World or are you far travelers? As far an agent traveler. of the I'm from Arrakis. Far traveler. Okay. And I think okay. I've traveled, Brains. but I'll say that I've never been to Arrakis. Fair Otherwise enough. I'm fairly well traveled. Gotcha, gotcha. In many Which makes a sense. fine world. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, been, I've never been to Arrakis. I've never wanted to go to Arrakis. Um, I'm, I'm not here under protest, but I'm not enthusiastic either. I've definitely been off world for training and stuff, but I, but I came back in that, in that way that like, that when I left, I was like, you'll all, you'll all see, I'm going to be better than all of you. And then like moved back. <laughs> like I've got that energy. So I've just been like, yep. I got like that kind of stuff going on. So I'm, I'm glad that we're not going, I'm glad we're, you know, I'm glad to be off Spice World. It's, it's, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it's just nice to be going somewhere. Yes. Yeah. You will enjoy Arrakis. Um, Do have a lot you of ever people had to drink your own sweat before? I haven't had to. Hmm. Have you <laughs> tried? Well, how else would I know? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a carnivore of knowledge. I need to mm. know what my own sweat tastes like. Come on. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I guess to answer your question, yes, I have had to drink, but probably not in the way that you mean. Uh, well, be Dry prepared place. to enjoy it. Yeah. There's um, this one mm -hmm. time on the ornithopter when the AC went out. And uh, uh, I'm pretty uh, sure I was drinking my sweat. It was just rolling. Uh, Parmoon, you will be <laughs> glad to see that I am well prepared. And I bust out a totally like cheap imitation thing. <laughs> you just got like the cans on the side of your head. <laughs> oh, it's not wow. working now, but it, it does flow. Mm. Uh, I didn't um, know where to connect it to. <laughs> you will survive for a period of time you know that is the goal things are gonna be indeed the goal is. for you <laughs> excellent well soon enough you are landing into the the transport uh high up in the sky and it starts moving pretty quickly and this is gonna be i mean for Agent Broad, Brad Montana, no problem at all. There's certainly uh, a pilot on here, and you're welcome to assist um, Absolutely. on this one. But they want to make sure you're taken care of, and uh, and there is a quick um, fade to black as uh, as the ship goes off into the sky and begins leaping on its way to uh, to Arrakis. And real quick, as we're doing this, I have to mention a rule thing that uh, that I got wrong last time, and I want to make sure oh. we all have right this time. Uh, all of your assets are quality level one, not zero. Mm. Um, mm. <laughs> oh. Level zero is what you can find out in the world with you. So, <laughs> so if you go searching so around for something, mean... yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, spicy poop was, uh, they were already quality level one. Are they quality yeah. level two? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Leveling up the poops. Leveling up the poops. Um, so let's see. So <laughs> what that means is a lot of these things maybe are personalized, right? Like if you do have an ornithopter and it is uh, quality level one, maybe you've got compartments on it. Maybe, you know, it is just the one you're used to. You trained on this. Um, if you had a, a weapon, it might be a weapon that came down in the family. So you do get some bonuses for having these things. Um, I just wanted to make sure we got that out of the way because I forgot at the start of the session awesome. today. <laughs> Cool. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Well, um, the trip to Arrakis is absolutely uneventful. Fortunately, because, uh, you know, traveling in space is its own thing. Um, you're way more excited mm -hmm. about potentially landing here on the planet. Um, and as we, we cut back in, um, the heroes are looking down at this, uh, this bright orange planet, this endless desert uh, beneath you. You can see from the height that you are in, which is loading into Agent Brad Montana's thopter and getting ready to drop down onto the surface. Um, you can see these plateaus risen above the sand, built out of rock. Um, the coordinates you're at, there's, there's not a lot of, of settlement that you can see. You know, there's for certainly people out there in the distance, but you're far from, from the cities that have been established on the surface. Um, 
the thopter drops down and starts heading towards one of these plateaus in particular. And as you get closer, you see that there's other ones on the ground down here. Uh, quite a few, actually. And um, let's see, the, the plateau is maybe like, it's not huge. It's about 50 feet above the sands. There's other dropships and thopters here. Um, you notice that most of them bear the marks of the Imperial Service itself. Um, and a couple mm -hmm. uh, have a symbol of House Harkonnen, this like up and coming house that, uh, well, not a lot of people like. Uh, nearby, yeah, I mean, um, nearby there is this large canvas palisade that you can see, like it's blowing in the breeze as you land off in the distance. Uh, and you see that there are quite a few people already around this area. Uh, there's small lines of groups that are heading into that tent for whatever reason. And this seems to be the, uh, the start of the survey mission. Um, as you exit, you kind of look around and see not just people everywhere, but you see members of the uh, the Imperial Service that are walking around. They're they're kind of on the perimeter, looking outwards at the sands uh, with uh, with laser guns and long knives, um, checking the perimeter out. Few are looking inwards as well, mm -hmm. um, but mostly okay. out for any kind of threat. Um, there's certainly natives of of the planet here, um, but also members of other houses that are gathering beneath this canvas palisade. As we check Ooh. out all the rest of the people here and in this space, I uh, just want to mutter to the rest of the group, remember, head chef Fieri Spice said that we should look as if we don't actually want it, but secretly we really do want it. So don't I'm... look thirsty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can do that. All I want is a glass of water now. I mean, <laughs> drinking from the same Fair. soda can I've been drinking from since we left Spice World. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is fine. I don't, I don't get, Excellent. I don't get thirsty. I'm, 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 I'm Greek extraction. I'm fine. <laughs> do we wow. see our enemies here? What other houses do we Ooh. see? Is That's Paula a good Dean here? Or you the cult of Yelp? Right. You start looking in and. Uh, most of the people here that you can see, I mean, there is a pretty large contingent from House Harkonnen here. Um, you don't see any uh, famous characters, if you will, but as you're looking around, you see a group that is trying to be really, really pleasant and it looks bad on them. You know, like they look like they, they're trying to be friendly and they're just struggling to actually meet that standard. It's more, a little more arrogant than you might want um, for your, your friends here. That's a kind of the House Harkonnen way. Um, they take up most of the group. Uh, you look around and you see a few people, and they they look hot. They look out of place. They're they're like wearing some heavy clothes. You see the symbol of House Atreides on their shoulder. Um, they they look uncomfortable and a little confused. Um, but that's not who you're looking for. You're looking for like your enemies, right? Um, yeah. There's 20 members mm -hmm. off in the side, uh, speaking speaking kind of quietly to uh, to each other. Um, they have this this large rope that they are holding onto, and each of them is, is grabbing it. Um, and as they are muttering, they're kind of having this this conversation with each other, even at a distance. And when you get close, you just can't hear what they're saying at all. Um, and as you get close, kind of looking around, um, you do. You look over and you see like they're trying not to stare at you, but they're staring at you. <laughs> there are. Mm -hmm. Six members that you think, seven rather, of House Dean off in the distance. I mean, no one immediately mm -hmm. recognizable because like you would spend the time to recognize members of House Dean on site. Come on. Um, but uh, you think maybe they recognize Shut some up. of you. <laughs> hmm. Well, how could they not? Exactly. Right, right. I'd like to, I have a talent of hyper awareness. Ah, tell me uh, more, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would have to... I guess first roll to see what I notice about them. And then using my talent, whenever I spend momentum to obtain information about the current situation or a person I currently observe, I can mm -hmm. ask two questions for the first point of momentum spent. Yes, indeed. So I would have so to that... roll first for that. Right, right, yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're, you're trying to kind of check out the, the folks around here, right? So that feels mm -hmm. like an understand skill. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Totes. And then... Okay, let me go ahead and, oops. Oh man, I, how do you, uh, oh, I just probably just click on, 
understand. Ha <laughs> ha, there it is. Oh, right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I clicked yeah, on the D20 nice. by mistake. So I don't want to use that D20 roll. I want it to roll from the sheet if that's okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, which drive? In, let's see. It's a good question. Um, I must always move in the best interest of my house. Duty. I I agree. That sounds great. Okay. So that's giving you a, a total of 12 for your target number that you're Pretty looking for. Good. Um, and you've got 2d20. All right. Oh, uh, I did. Did we lose I've, any uh, momentum because of this? We did. During the okay. cut scene, uh, we lose one momentum. We are down to four. Okay. It's still pretty good, right? Yeah, still pretty good. I'm wondering, uh, my target number is 12, mm -hmm. you said, right? Yes. Do I spend for another die? Well, let's ask. I mean, as you're looking around, this is very quick, right? You are hyper aware, which is good. And I am going to lower the difficulty because you are a crafty Bene Gesserit. I mean, those are okay. two of your traits. And um, I will, but... I'll spend momentum on the talent use for asking questions later. I won't spend it on an okay. extra die for now. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'll say this is with that trait, this will be a difficulty one. So you just need one success. OK. All right. They're right here, ready to be looked at. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and then, am I using a focus? It doesn't no. look like it. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. There I you go. One success. Okay. One success. Um, Ooh, it is also success. just important for the record to let us know if you roll any ones or twenties, and if tasks are more difficult, all sorts of high numbers are bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're good for now. Everything's good for now. Um, mm -hmm. So perfect. As you look around, let's. Uh, someone mentioned just in the chat, like House Dean is absolutely one of the sets of villains that we crafted when we were building our house. Um, they are. They hate you with a passion. They want to destroy your house, burn it down, salt spice world. Um, <laughs> would that work? That'll work. Um, who? who? <laughs> they want yeah, House Dean. Right. I, sure. I don't. Who's this? House Who's that? Who's that? Dean? I literally, I I literally can't her. forget things, and I don't know who that. I've forgotten him. I'm saying this Amazing. like loud, like loud to the group. I'm like, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I would have heard of somebody called House Dean. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, and as you were looking at them in particular, you do notice some things. Stunting. I mean, not only is there uh, someone who you can tell exactly who the leader of the group is. Um, she's uh, pretty well-dressed, uh, seems kind of to be managing other people. You can tell that one of the members of House Dean, and I looked this up, has eyes like mm -hmm. an angel, but a heart that's cold. They are a smooth operator. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Um... <laughs> That's what you called them, right? Otherwise, I did some oh, weird yeah. research for no reason. No, it was good. I'm really glad you said it. <laughs> oh, my God. That landed real well. That was... So that, did you say that person looks like they're the most, like, in charge of this group? There is someone else who seems to be in charge, but kind of hiding in the group, trying to keep their eyes down. There is someone there uh, who you think has the skills of a, of a house assassin. Oh, okay. Um, I would like to then spend my momentum... Okay. Uh, to ask two questions. I'm ready. <laughs> so the first question is, um, does Ooh. the assassin have a mark already? Like, is there anything in Ooh. their uh, body language that I can pick up or like their, uh, who are they looking at checking out that would tell me that if they have a mark? I would say that, uh, that you noticed they were looking around the room pretty well, but as you entered, their eyes went down. So they are trying really hard not to look at all of you. Um, right. Um, but as you look, um, you don't you don't see any. I mean, and I'll give you this for free for your hyper awareness. You're looking at them. They don't seem to have any like weapons in hand or anything like that. You're not suspecting an attempt right now. <laughs> OK. All right. And then the second question is, do they seem like pretty confident right now as a house that they're going to like get get the spice? No, <laughs> they are sweating here. I mean, they look uh, they look better prepared than House Atreides. That's for sure. I mean, they knew what they were doing when they came here. Okay. Um, but they they don't seem fully on. You know, they're they're chattering a lot about what they're doing, and they're seeing like the thopters, and they're like, "How much is this going to cost?" Um, you think they're <laughs> they're a little too small to be able to afford to set up a spice production, um, you know, uh, mechanism or whatever here on on Arrakis. Mm -hmm. But they are checking it out, and they are hopeful. Okay, thank you. Okay, you got it. Anything? Anyone else want to do anything uh, as you are waiting for events to develop here? I'm, do we see oh. signs of the news organization here? 
Mm-hmm. You look around and you, their name yeah. now. you do also, not. Yelp. Oh, Yelp. Dark Cold yes. Yelp. Yep, they are not here. Uh, your other nemeses. <laughs> um, Actual nemesis. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. The ones you really don't like. Um, yeah. But uh, you look around mm-hmm. and you don't see them anywhere. No. Um, hmm. And, you know, you feel like you don't feel, well, okay, how do we put this? We, we talked about them as an organization more than a house, uh, but they act like a house. Mm-hmm. Like other houses wouldn't really hide them within their ranks. So you don't think like two of the Harkonnens are secretly members, like secretly reporters. That's... Okay. Because <laughs> they like they're shady. That's for sure. Right? Yes. But shady, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> the feudal system doesn't allow them to be shady in this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think Parmoon, um, can I identify the richest looking person in here? Yes, you can. Like, who looks like they have wealth? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say that uh, that first of all, once you notice the uh, the the courtier who's kind of leading uh, House Dean over there seems to be kind of the the most wealthy among that group. But your eyes are drawn very quickly to someone in imperial green. Um, there is is someone over there, and they 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 are standing pretty tall. You can see a couple members of the uh, Imperial Guard are near them and kind of watching their back as they are chatting to a few members of House Harkonnen. Uh, they seem to be up front in the group, not quite in the center, like ready to give a speech, but poised. Mm-hmm. Um, you're pretty confident that's the person in charge around here. Okay, I'll kind of like signal our group and like nod with my head in that direction. We need to keep an eye on them. <laughs> and I also, um, yeah, I, I say, cool. and we should also just keep an eye on House of Dean. They brought an assassin with them. Ooh. Wait, what house? Which one? Who? I know. <laughs> They're very forgettable. <laughs> the sweaty ones huh. over there. Right, right. Which one's oh, the assassin? Oh, the buttery ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually could remember them before. I was being, I was just being a jerk. Uh, what's, which, <laughs> which, which one's the assassin? I'm just I'm like, I I'm point. Like, I point. Well, I don't point. I actually. You, you gesture. You. Yeah, okay. Gesture, you know, we we have a whole thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I I move so that I'm the person farthest away from the assassin. Uh, definitely putting other people in the group in peril. But I'm just like, like real <laughs> subtle. So, like, so know, what are we doing? We go. We go into the desert. In the Dune books, they have house signs. I think all our house signs look like eating and like utensil type gestures. I like that. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I, I like, I, I've, I'm, I'm like, I'm, if I put the pinky up, that's the yeah, that's yep. the that's the go sign. That's a good. I have a question <laughs> about that. How quickly can you all get to a set of utensils? Is it immediate, like just for signs? Or... I literally pull out like a knife, fork, and a spoon, like that's like <laughs> like between my three knuckles, like Wolverine. I'm just like ready to go. <laughs> I feel like I, I carry like a polished silver, like the but like the black tarnished silver mm-hmm. that has a little bit of like a rainbow reflective color on it. Mm-hmm. I carry a, a set of utensils that are of that type of metal and they're in a nice little leather packet that yes. I just carry around. I've got, I like yeah, it. Mine are like those, like when somebody gets too into minimalism and ends up buying like a $19 fork on, on Amazon, and like, the only <laughs> fork I'll ever need. Like that's like, that's <laughs> yeah. the kind of stuff I've got. Mm-hmm. Cause I just did my research and I was like, it's the best fork. I don't need any other fork. It's the best one. Right. Yeah. I I really uh, feel like the house of Posh. from a regular fork though. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh good good. Uh, I was gonna say it feels like the house of Posh might be le- held on to their own silverware as like personal totems. Like you can't find silverware out there. That's a method of assassination, is it? Mm. <laughs> Gotta keep uh, your own. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually feels lovely right. too. You know, you don't show up to dinner and there's cutlery out. You got to bring your own. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I like that Which, for sure. It always, all those people who like their first day on Spice World, they can't eat anything. <laughs> no, it's all with your hands, or you die. Like, like I don't fine. know, you choose. Yeah, <laughs> can I have a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, you Harmoon would yes, have like ahead. a wooden set, I think. Um, nice. But like the wooden set is kept either inside of spicy poops because I don't think like they can they eat sand. Um, so if I put like a wooden object, I could just like open up their weird little mouth and be like, ah, yes, thank you for this fork and knife. 
<laughs> dull knife. It's like a butter knife. Um, uh-huh. And like, it's like a small set, you know, but it's enough that I can like signal. It's like, um, like a doll set, you know, and it's made out of wood. I probably carved it myself. <laughs> I like that. Amazing. So when we want to, so I just, I just want to, when we want to <laughs> communicate inconspicuously, oh we God, all pull out our sort of, <laughs> we're all pulling out silver, but you're like, hold on. <laughs> I need to. I need Hold to. Uh, I need to medically induce <laughs> vomiting in my in my in my wor- in my worm to get this out. If we're gonna get this on the DL. Okay. <laughs> you learned to do it in a subtle right, way. All right. Yeah. No. It's excellent. I, I love our. I love our team. Um, oh wow. Uh, <laughs> so far, so we're doing a great job keeping a low profile and looking like uh-huh. our house did not mm-hmm. send their best people mm-hmm. on this job. <laughs> Success. Perfect. Um, yeah, you look over and uh, the members that are holding onto this rope uh, from House uh, uh, Gantria, uh, you can tell that there are, as you're now getting closer, they have wires leading kind of like up from uh, from the rope up their hands and into their robes, uh, seem to be using kind of the metal to communicate themselves somehow, um, which is good. So yeah, you see the secrets everywhere. House Dean hasn't really developed those secrets yet, so they're just trying to be really quiet. And it's pretty windy here, let's be honest. <laughs> Um, they're having a tough time. Mm-hmm. Um, Do we recognize yes. any of the imperial people as being important dignitaries or anything like that? Interesting question. Uh, would your character? Do you do you think the doctor would recognize folks from possibly. the imperial service? Um, yeah, possibly. Okay. I, I think um, that's the kind of thing I care about, given yeah. the long term goals. Fair enough. Um, we have. We also have. Uh, a men's hat around. So I think that once once they are pointed out as the person in charge, I think your group could pretty readily discover that the the leader up there is uh, Imperial Envoy, who has um, quite a bit of uh, of power in the Empire. Uh, kind of kind of a voice of the Emperor sort of deal here for sure. Um, their name is Demiran Algol, and uh, and soon enough they they start moving away from the Harkonnens. Kind of you see them counting and realizing that all five houses are here and they're preparing to speak. Good, we got here last. Good, good. That's the power move for sure. <laughs> Indeed. Fashionably appropriate. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, did that answer that question fully for you? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, in that case, um, Envoy Algol stands forward, uh, takes a deep breath, and kind of bellows over the wind um, in the distance and says, In accordance with the Emperor's wishes, you will each be assigned to a carry-all to survey a region of Arrakis. Once you've seen the equipment needed to harvest the spice, your houses may then submit a request to begin operations on the planet. If the Emperor sees fit to agree to your requests, you'll gain provisional oversight over a segment of Arrakis, you know, subject to the newly appointed governor, of course. Um, and there is a laugh from the Harkonnens that no one likes. Um, and the, the envoy keeps keeps chatting and keeps going on on this mission, pointing out that the it, this is a very expensive service and this is such a huge honor to be asked here to the planet. And the empire the empire needs the best houses in the best positions and and on and on and on. Um, We're just like talking shit. We're like this right. this guy. Oh, come I on, swear to God, it's good. He, they they do all the information <laughs> at the start and then they just keep. <laughs> going yeah with our forks yeah. and stuff just clack you know what hold on a second <laughs> uh, <laughs> Me- meanwhile brad is riveted like he doesn't notice that anyone else playing with their silverware he's just like he's so into oh, the speech no. he's laughing at all the jokes he's you know clapping uh, when all the everyone else claps uh-huh. uh yeah mm-hmm. he's just he's just into it perfect he's just happy to be alive and he's around you Woo-hoo. might get stabbed by a fork, you know, Montana. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gentle, <laughs> like flying back. What, what are you doing? It wouldn't be the first time for him. <laughs> no. <laughs> a lot of eye rolls and like this gesture, like <laughs> pilots. Oh, this is good. <laughs> right. Oh, this is good. Um, folks are, are talking. You see other people kind of chattering, right? House Gantria silently with the, the big rope and everything. Uh, you're looking around, and, and the envoy seems to be fading a little bit as they're looking around making sure all their questions are getting answered. It's the Q&A section of every panel. Um, mm. And uh, you are actually um, one of you is uh, called out to. I have a question for you. This is actually really important. Um, an NPC is about to arrive, mm-hmm. and uh, I would like one of you to be connected with this character. 
So um, this character is going to be someone who left Arrakis or left uh, Spice World, excuse me, some time ago. Um, uh, they grew up in the city as as kind of a ward for a while, and then was sent off as part of. I I was considering it as part of the trade that brought Parmoon to Spice World, maybe maybe kind of like an. Ex I, I don't know if that makes sense. That was in my head, but I don't know if that's that makes yeah. sense. Um, I like is that. It Patrick Stewart. It is. It is not Patrick Stewart. Uh, oh gosh. Uh -huh. um, They've been here for some time on the planet. I would say uh, at this point, maybe like five years. Um, do any of your characters feel like a person like that would be in your backstory? Not I mean, really a you know, specialist I'm, I'm in any the of the place. schools. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm all over the place. So it could be someone like that's just always a thing like, oh, yeah, uh, Brad ran into them and started running you know, his mouth off at him at this place. Um, it does seem like Parmoon might have a good connection, but I'm always mm -hmm. happy to be the yeah. uh, social. I, maybe like the I mean, of us the even. the connected sure. person. Oh yeah, that could be yeah. too. I'm not really here. Yeah, like I just know them passively, like, you know. Ever. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so definitely maybe anybody. part of that discussion. I would I would say that probably um, this character and this character's name is uh, is Yaris Obergon. Um, and actually, for the purposes of this adventure, Justin, go ahead and add a trait to your character sheet called Friend of Obregon. That is the word Oregon with a B in it. Thank um, you. Um, B, uh, I, I would say... Again? Uh, Jaris, J-A-R-I-S. Thank you. Um, although, they'll go by Obregon if that is easier. Um, they... Uh, Obergon comes over and she is, uh, I mean, she looks, first of all, rugged. Like, uh, she's been out here for quite some time. She's wearing this, uh, this well-fitted, um, like, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, weathered well still used. suit. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, tall, uh, hardy, been out here a long time, very tan from being in the sun out here in the desert and, uh, has a big smile. Uh, on her face as she looks and sees Agent Brad Montana. Um, I mean, gives a <laughs> wave to Parmoon, of course, excited to see you all. Um, but uh, but she steps over and uh, and gives or tries to give you a big hug. Uh, yeah, no, I go right in for it. And I was okay. Like, oh, Joris, it's been so long. <laughs> What's it been? Five, six huh. years now? Right? Oh, it's so You're great. It's so good to see hole? you. Uh, of course, of course. I mean, it's a good place to work, right? So there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to do. Um, but I heard you're all coming down to uh, you know, ride on on one of the harvesters out here, and uh, I, I put in my pitch to make sure you ended up on my boat. Yes, well that's excellent, and you, you know, in fact, that is true. We did decide that we are going. We we wanted to come out here. Well, mostly Par Moon. You know, you know where she's great. And and uh, <laughs> we just wanted to ride the the harvesters, and I brought my closest friends, and uh, you know, I mean, that's really why we came. Right, the harvesters. right. So I'm so glad you're going to drive it. Um, these guys, they aren't as excited about the harvesters as I am. But let me tell you what, I, oh. I kind of want to fly it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Obergon kind of looks around and, and looks at everybody, and, and you see her, like, dig into a pocket. It takes it takes a few moments, actually, but soon enough, she's pulling out a fork and spoon and starting to make a couple gestures. Um, you get the sense that she is in the know, actually. She's she's part of the house and uh, is on board with your mission. Um, Sweet. That probably like makes Par Moon light up a little bit, like oh, like this person actually knows what's up, like, <laughs> and they'll clack back with their silver silverware, like uh, some kind of like yeah, like welcome <laughs> to the group. Excellent. Uh, yes. We will grind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will grind you. Um. We will grind you. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Uh, Jacelmica will also take notice and and perk up, and um, say to Jaris, "Well met." Posher, Poshy, oh. <laughs> fellow Poshy, fellow Poshy, intriguing. Um, yes, uh, you know she kind of like stops for a second and, and does uh, a bit of a bow as well. Um, although well, it's been a long time since it's a little rusty out here, that's for sure. Um, but but she says yes, well, well welcome, welcome to welcome to Arrakis. Uh, I've uh, I've brought some things for for some of you. Of course, uh, I know Parmoon is is ready for this, but uh, I I've got. Um, Actually, hey Brad, did you bring your thopter? I sure did. Oh, let's let's take yours. You I mean, it's 
yeah yeah uh i can head over to yeah. mine um you know i it's an old harkonnen beast i'm happy to leave it here yeah. no problem um grab but, your uh, gear we're taking betty well <laughs> Great. I've got gear for all of you. I've got a couple still suits. You're going to want them. I don't know if it... Oh, yes. That's I mean, what I was going to ask. Oh, yeah, I you... did find this. Uh, is it good? Mm -hmm. That's, That's necessary. Pokes in, takes a look at it, and goes, I mean, I I think so. Most people, I, I leave it to them to take care of their gear. If uh, you look, you know, like a professional, so if you're don't good, you're that good. You. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, um, can I do yeah. it? Can I... Can I... Uh, ask a question uh, subtly. Of course. Um, it's, it's just sort of conversation to the group. I'm like, speaking in code, I'm like, look, it seems like the best way to get this bid without looking like we're trying too hard is before we even get going, let's try to take at least one of these other groups out of the running. Like, I, their carry all does not have to make it all the way to the spice. Mm -hmm. Like, this is old Harkonnen equipment, notoriously poorly maintained. You know, it, I'm not saying it has to crash and fall into the desert and they all be eaten by a sandworm or set upon by Fremen, but that could happen. Mm. Uh, follow up. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. I have I had a question earlier that relates to this. Who is the newly appointed governor? Uh, there, at the moment, there the isn't one. Yeah. Um, they they are announcing like kind of part of this. Uh, it's it's in between right now. The emperor is trying to put the planet under new management, basically, oh, and has, has invited okay. some people. You're not sure that uh, that Guy Fieri would end up being the governor of Arrakis at this point, but who knows? <laughs> so earlier, when uh, that uh, imperial envoy said mentioned the newly appointed governor, it was like it could be one of you all kind of, that was the insinuation right okay. yeah and there, you you definitely uh, with your hyper awareness saw house harkonnen like look around a little bit and yes, you saw house okay. atreides like almost in tears like what no they're not really but <laughs> they're <laughs> woefully outmatched here in the desert <laughs> okay so uh now in response to drohai mm -hmm. i say i think this is an interesting plan and maybe we should first identify who might be the the biggest competition yeah. And I think we can rule out House Atreides and House Dean. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Those are. Wait, those, House those... Dean's here? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I didn't see them. Where are they? Uh, <laughs> oh. You, you look over and you see seven people <laughs> staring right at you. <laughs> yeah, they, just, they haven't looked away. They just cannot <laughs> stop staring at us. <laughs> If we're, if and, we're and Brad's gonna, never yeah. quiet. Like that's just 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 as a rule, Brad's never quiet. So uh -huh. he, he probably said that real loud. <laughs> Good. Let them know that they are unmemorable. Uh, well, I, I think you're right. I think we. I think Harkonnens are the biggest threat here. I don't exactly want to get on their shit list either. But if there's a way, maybe I don't know. It just they don't have to. Have maybe a make... stealthy way to sabotage. Maybe not assassination just yet, because who knows? We might need allies later for something. It's true. But maybe a stealthy way to uh, sabotage someone. Yeah. How do we? Um... Hmm. Do we know? Do we I have could any... call a sandworm. <laughs> that could definitely help us clean it up. The evidence Is... of whatever we end up doing. We would also be at risk, though. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is no, there a way, kind of him. looking, looking at like some of the other equipment uh, nearby, or you know, from the other houses? It doesn't matter whose house, but some of the equipment, in in, in look for ways to subtly sabotage it to slow them down. That's exactly um, what I'm. And I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's okay. like you know, I have deductive reasoning, I have strategy. I don't know if either of those would help. That makes a lot of um, sense. And this this is going to take a search, right? Because you you have, you have a couple things yeah. you need to do. Like, first, not look like you're searching because there are members of the, the Imperial forces around here. You're not sure how well trained they are. But, uh, you know, if we start getting the Imperial forces around, that's a problem. Um, but um, so you're, you're going to need to kind of keep yourself hidden while you're searching for whatever you're searching for. Um, but I'm down for it. I, so. I have a, can we study our equipment? And then deduce that the same thing, like we could just look like we're checking Ooh, over our yeah. carry all and and mm -hmm. making sure it's all fine. Sounds good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So uh, so let's see. So this feels like a a search style activity, right? Um, which means we're probably talking about uh, the understand skill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So tell me more about who's going to search for this. And certainly other folks can help with this, right? If you do want to team up, there is a way to assist in this game, uh, add some extra D20s to the role. If I could help with stealth successes. in any way, then I'd like to. Okay. Stealth, my stealth is under move, but you can you don't have to use your focus with that same skill, right? It can be any skill that you're rolling with. Um, let's see. Wow, now I'm blanking. Um, I think I, I, think I remember reading that. I think you're you okay. Could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can so, assign it to any skill. Right, right. right. So not, then, yeah. But then beyond that, it stays there. So if I can help mm. with making this stealthy so no one else really notices the, what we're doing, then I well, would like to do that. Right. Someone is going to have to, you know, if you're going to do a thing, we'll have to do some moving for sure. So stealth would certainly come up for that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is interesting. I mean, yeah, like, like, you know, I, I think both Jorhai and I were, we're, we're coming with, look, look up with similar ideas. Uh, my strength is really going to be more of once we figure out what we're going to do, coming up with the, the, the plan to do it. Um, but I do have, I don't know if deductive reasoning would help with that, or we just want to do a straight up understand role for this. Um, I'm happy with that. Let's see. I'm, I'm working on my feet real quick. Um, this is starting yeah. to feel uh, a little espionage. -y. So I'm taking a quick look at the espionage conflict action. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Kind of see if there's some ideas in there. It feels like what you're looking to do is identify an asset to destroy, destroy, disable, whatever you're, you're yeah. planning to do here. Disable. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think it sounds like it's going to take probably someone to do some understanding, some uh, some deductive reasoning to find something that could be sabotaged. I'm and then sorry, someone did, someone, to... did someone need to apply their deductive reasoning skills to discover a weakness? <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, what someone needs well... to do? Uh, because I... I'm a twisted mint out, and that is, baby, we just love doing that. Mm -hmm. That's our favorite right. thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I can, but I think in order to do it, to do it specifically, I am going to have to generate a momentum by adding to our threat. So that mm. is like, I can use mom momentum to do this specifically to learn a weakness, but I do have to get mm -hmm. that momentum from. That's the it's the twisted mintat skill. It says whenever you attempt an understand test, you ah. generate one bonus momentum point for each die you bought by adding to threat. This bonus momentum may only be used to obtain information about the most effective ways to harm or inflict pain upon a person within the scene, or to create a trait which represents a weakness you've discovered which you can exploit. Right. Uh, this is like my this is like my nice. my big thing. This is my yeah. uh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is, just All right. Very excited to cause a problem. Give him that. So right. This sounds good. I think um, I think we, we should do this probably in three parts. It sounds like three roles are going on here. First, kind yes. of the 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 battle plan, because that sounded pretty reasonable using some strategy to make sure, you know, you can you can set this whole thing up. We've got our stealth target and we've got our like sabotage planning target. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In that case, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, start with Cohen. I think that makes a lot of sense with Drow High searching first for the target, uh, and then potentially Brad Montana come on up with a plan, and just Selnica acting it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, definitely the idea guy in this scenario. All right. You know it's. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm with I you. Know. All right. Uh, so I got to check in on this myself. So I am gaining one threat. Uh, <laughs> that's all I heard, and that's great. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. So, uh, so you're doing that to gain one bonus. Um, I'm gaining an extra me. die right for the for this understand test. Yes. That I'm trying to do to understand the weakness, and I have to use it in order to learn the weakness. I got gotcha. I think that's sort of the way. I think it can all uh, like it, the way it's worded. It seems like it could also just be held like an escrow, but but still only be used for that. Like I don't know if it has to be used immediately, yeah. but just to simplify things, I'm just gonna try to that's get a, out. If that's all right, okay. I'm totally down. All right. Well, this is definitely an understand check, like you were saying. Uh, data analysis or attention to de detail would both apply here pretty well. Um, this is gonna be difficult. You got folks watching you. Uh, you're looking around quite a bit. I don't know how often you, you sabotage thopters or, or anything. Um, so for me, this is feeling like a, uh, this part I think is feeling pretty daunting. So that is difficulty three. Okay. And how many, how many, do I, I've got one extra. How many am I bringing to this? Right if now using... one. So you have 3d20. We're going to go ahead and drop that by one because you are an analyst. 
Um, okay. So difficulty two. You need two successes. Currently with 3d20, and you have a focus. Okay. So I'm, I'm making it understand. Do, do, am I making it in conjunction with the drive? Yes. What drive are you going to use for this? Uh, then? So it's the so biggest question. I feel like I don't want to metagame it, but this feels like truth. Like I'll leave either find the truth or make it. Like I'm going yeah. to go with this. I'm trying to. All right. So it's a well chosen drive statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that looks like you are up at a total of uh, 15. You've got your uh, you've got 3d20 to roll. 3d20. Okay. All right. So I have to get below or above 15. So you're trying to get below 15, and because this is a tricky task, uh, I said this was uh, complicated. Or excuse me, <laughs> I said this was a daunting task, which means 18 to 20 will add some complications to the scene. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So let uh, me know what what you roll on this. All right. Um... And I, I don't, this doesn't feel like a perfect recall thing. So I don't think I can like just take one on those. I'm just, I'm trying to figure something out. Right. All right. Okay. I rolled an 11, a 15 and a 14. And a 14. Those are all successes. <laughs> um, Hot damn. <laughs> because you were focused, right? Um, and you needed two successes. That is maxing out your momentum. Uh, you are at six at the moment. Nice work. Um, easily, right? You 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 pause. You ponder. It's the data moving everywhere, right? It's all the equations everywhere. Um, you look around and you absolutely see that uh, uh, House Harkonnen has a couple sets of, of thopters here, and uh, and you could sabotage one of them, and that would be bad. But wouldn't it be better to sabotage like two of them at once? Um, and you very quickly see how you could take. Um, uh, take this cable and kind of attach it to two different things at once um, should be good. And then when it launches, I mean, assuming someone could cover that up, um, they might both like gain oil leaks almost immediately and, and start losing themselves as they get over the, the sands. Excellent. Right. Um, so that would be two leaving a third one, which couldn't carry them all for sure. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds excellent. Sounds okay. good, yeah. And so I'm relaying all this. I'm like, so we just put the cable and we put it on both. And then mm -hmm. we're leaking <laughs> oil everywhere. Bing, bam, boom. Uh, I I know that you were planning part. something very complicated with your, your twisted Mentat brain, but I've played a lot of mouse trap, And so that's where my head's at. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't have anything in mind. I literally, I was like, I, I, I can... Literally, when these things come in the book, it is. I'm excited to see the movie because Ornithopter, it's like, I know... They're supposed to have wings, but it is so hard just not to picture a helicopter. So thank you for yeah. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited for whatever. I'm with you for whatever, for whatever happens. Good, good. Well, I mean, you've got the plan and you relay it to your team, um, but there are still the guards around and they will see this happening. Obviously, they're watching the perimeter. They're watching the the heliport. Um, uh, Agent Brad Montana, how are you going to say yes, that? sir? All right. So How what are I'm going to do is I'm going to exactly. Well, I'm uh, as uh, as Drohai tells us the way to to deactivate the, the these ornithopters and, and 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 all that stuff. I say, all right. Well, listen here. This is what we're going to do. And I put out my hand and I say, all right, Doctor Yi Wan, you're going to start <laughs> on over here and then you're going to do this. And you know, I know it sounds weird, Paramon, Paramon, <laughs> but you're going to be doing this. And just you, you trust me. And uh, you know, Jessalinka. Now, whenever <laughs> this happens and this happens, you count to 10 and then they just walk casually over there. And at that point, I will start a fight with the House Dean folk and there'll be a huge <laughs> distraction. And if, if it all works out, no one will notice you at all. All right. I... <laughs> I accept this action. All right, this plan seems seems pretty well uh, well done. It is definitely going to be a risky thing, and I'm going to just take a threat uh, because you are definitely adding to some conflict in this game. <laughs> um, so, with that in mind, uh, this is uh, you're going to be doing this one. I mean, honestly, that plan <coughs> doesn't sound that complicated. You're a risk taker. You're ready to go. Uh, let's put this into difficulty two. Um, yeah, let's make it a difficulty three. So dropping it down to two because you are a risk taker and you're about to get in a fight. Um, what do you got for your role? What are you up to? This sounds like... Okay, um, well, so yeah. understand, right? Uh -huh. um, and then, uh, you know, and I keep going back and forth uh, between power and duty, right? Because power, this this gets us closer to 
to to all of our goals and specifically my goal of of, of being wealthy. Uh-huh. I, I, uh, but at the same time, this also falls under duty because you know I serve the guild, but I belong to the House of Posh. Right. Um, I want to lean more towards power, but uh, I will defer to you, OGM. Totally up to you. I think that makes sense, and I think your drive statement works for this, right? I mean, you are sabotaging yep. this to gain something you want, so I'm in. Yep. Right. Um, that and means so you're, you're going up. And I got two dice to do it. You got a big old 16. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, am I using a focus? Uh, yes. One. Strategy, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, I only got one mm. success. One success. Ooh, and so, an 18, and it's which an 18. we just said. Yes. Cool. Be, however, <laughs> before yeah. that oh, all ooh. goes wrong. Finally, this is what I've been sure. looking for. <laughs> I've been watching <laughs> my good friend, Montana. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm waiting for the consequence of the roll. <laughs> what bad things are going to happen now? As I'm usual, sure. I did not buy into this plan. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> as I see what's about I'm... to go wrong, uh, that's when I throw a rock that distracts one of the guards, preventing okay. this from going poorly. And what I'm using, I'm using my bolster. Once per scene, when an ally fails a skill test, you may immediately spend two points of momentum or add two threat, Ooh. I'll spend momentum, to Dang allow them it. to re-roll their dice pool. <laughs> yes. You may also use yes. so my great. discipline instead, which is a seven, if you would like. Yes. Wow. Um, That's a great I don't know that I want to use your ability. discipline, because I'm rolling an eight with uh, my uh, power, but that is yep. awesome. I like that That's a lot. That's a re-roll. That uh, is once per scene re-roll. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Nice. <laughs> So I just do a complete reroll, not yep, just same the one. deal. No, the whole the right, whole dice well, pool. All right. Well, let's see how bad I fail this time. Well, hey! there we go. Um, succeeds. Right. <laughs> Which well I'm okay done. With, but also, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop in one of these scenes. I'm so same. excited. Same. It. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it has to. Um, uh, honestly, with with that one, as you're looking around, you're coming up with the plan. Um, you got that looks like three successes there, right? So, uh, yeah, that's correct. Just mm-hmm. on, it's confusing to me. That's all right. Um, so that's going to add one momentum back to the pool. You're back up to five. I have four threats. Now, here we go, um, Giselle Nika. It is your time. You see, you look around. I mean, you wanted to help with stealth. Are you up for heading in? Is this your? Are you going for it? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh-huh. not what I had intended, but if that's okay. what's needed, then I will do it. Uh, I will say that one I, of the things. I, I mean, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say. Yeah, I mean, Brad would have sent whoever, but I, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, when I was when I was talking about it, I thought it was your plan to sneak in and do it, but it could be whoever goes and does it. I, I'm, I'm fine with doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of treating this as like an extended still skill test instead of mm-hmm. like allowing you to roll an extra d20 to assist, which is Got another it. thing that we could do here. Um, however, Parmoon hasn't done anything in this scene really except been part of the plan. So if you two want to work on, on this sort of thing together um, and do an assist in there, that would be fine. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are you thinking? I'm into that. You've been told how to connect the things. Uh, it seems like eyes are elsewhere. This is the moment to move, but this is a dangerous moment. Mm-hmm. And so, we're trying to get to three ships, right? You're trying to connect two of them with one cable, just and then oh, okay. hide the cable perfectly. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds like a two-person, <laughs> uh, at least two-person job. So mm-hmm. sounds good. I'm down. If you're down, Parmoon. I think so. I'm rather stealthy on the worst of days. All right. All right. So this sounds good. Um, so one of you, basically, if you're going to do an assist or or which would probably be the easiest way to do this, uh, one of you gets to choose, you know, your whole setup and just roll a single D20 and one is going to roll the whole darn thing. Okay. Um, I only have I'll assist. I have five in my okay. move. Five. So, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on what oh, we're rolling for. Let this. me do this then. OK, and I'll assist. <laughs> yeah. I have a seven in my move. There you go. Um, okay. I also have Subtle Step, um, a uh, talent. When I attempt a move test to sneak or otherwise pass unseen through an area, um, the first extra D20 you purchase for this test is free. That so I just get a is free extra great. D20 to this. Nice. nice. Yeah. I am sneaky. Yes. I would. Uh, I definitely 
uh, would like to assist with a move roll because when I do that, my Prana Bindu conditioning kicks in and I can re-roll a single d20, which I only <laughs> have rolling one d20. But. This is amazing, <laughs> right? Um, so it sounds like we've got a good setup here. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to spend my threats because Ooh. not only mm. is this a this is a dire task, right? You have. 20 members of House Harkonnen over there. There's like 10 guards around. Sure, they're distracted because Brad Montana's over there punching someone. Um, <laughs> but um, they are We're still on guard. Up. This yeah. is part of their job. Um, right? I mean, a little fight. You think you think Brad Montana's going to have a scar, and that's about it. Um, I will say that, uh, that I'm going to spend enough. I'm going to spend all of my threat, all four of it, um, to increase the difficulty to five. Okay. Oh, so you okay. have five momentum and some rerolls and some free dice. Let's see this happen. <laughs> We're gonna have to burn some of those. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, I'm gonna say I four. Am... I'm gonna keep two threat. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> I can't. I can't go wild at okay. once. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, think, what drive is this? Probably duty, because I'm doing this for y'all. I'm pretty mm -hmm. unconcerned. I just want to go hang out and meet some sandworms. I mean, sure. Um, yeah, so mine. Duty I'm gonna do right. duty as well. OK, um, so move and duty, right? Um, so this sounds like that's going to be a an 11 target number for you. Um, how many dice are you going to roll? Me, I'm rolling four dice. You're rolling Ooh. four? OK, um, all, naturally. I'm, I'm grabbing a momentum. <laughs> You're going to spend a momentum? I'm grabbing a momentum, yep. OK. And I have my subtle step, which gives me an extra dice. So that's four. Nice. You can um, spend so two more four. momentum to get another d20 if you nah. want. Okay. I'm good. Cool. I got I got my homie helping me out with this task. So bring it on. <laughs> we are going to be fabulous. I do not have any uh focuses for this. Nope. Um well, well, well. Failures. <laughs> I'm so confident. Now okay, this is good. It happens, Justin. Oh, all <laughs> failures, but no complications in the scene. It's so good. No. I'm so excited. <laughs> this so this I can't was, even roll now, oh, right? Because uh, I mean, they would need no to get one, at least one success, right? Um, for the assist to to take effect. Exactly. So yeah. Like, could you is, roll for momentum? I don't know how that works. Okay. Okay. Unsuccessful. My roll won't count. Yeah. All right. Okay. I've never seen Let me this jump in. roll in a, in oh, the two d twenty system. Like never. Nope. Like that. Nope. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but but yeah. Two fourteens and two twelves. Like that's cursed. Cursed. Fourteen, fourteen, twelve, twelve. It really is. Yeah. I mean, you don't love to see it. All right. Um. Mm -hmm. So let's take a quick look. Make sure I know where we're at. I mean, this is definitely an unsuc a non success. But um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I say under my breath, maybe with a fork, I'm like, oh, uh, well, I didn't, you know, not like that. Like, <laughs> like this is like, but, just like quietly, like, because it's like, this is, this is like a thing. It's like, I'm like, guys, guys, I got the best plan. And then, and it goes, I'm like, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, shit, there's a lot more guys here than I realized. Oh, God. Right. Uh, maybe. And like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what goes wrong, too? Is it that we just don't make the, like, we're not able to connect the two with the cable? Like, do we, does the cable yeah, what, snap? How, does, how, does, right. how do we that's, fail? That's kind of what I'm thinking yeah, yeah. here, because... Um, because in the end, you are not, you know, this isn't a thing that, that hurts you. You don't gain complications from it or anything like that. It's just a failure. Um, and you had done well on the the other stuff, the getting people to not look your way. Um, so I think I think kind of you you head in there, um, you go in, you connect the cables, you cover them up. Perfect, excellent. This is all gonna work. Um and later we're going to find out that those were two separate cables. Um, they just dangle huh. a little bit as they fly away, and you're like, oh, huh. <laughs> That feels so real. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so many people in the chat saying duty right now. <laughs> oh. Yes. I love this game. All right. Um, so uh, <laughs> maybe the I'm like I'm like trying to trying to keep a good face. I'm like, maybe those one of those will get caught on the endless expanse of right. sand. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so you kind of right. get in eventually into Brad Montana's thopter, and as you were kind of like, just kind of starting to get up, those wings flapping as you're gaining altitude, you just watch them sail away off into the distance. Uh, well, I like waiting. Doing, I mean, oh well. waiting. 
and <laughs> see like the cable that separate and it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh, the of the red oh, out there. dang two different cables, two cables. Oh, two things. Things. Two cables. like you know there's a lot of cables we on runways so <laughs> <ever noticed? laughs> we so right close. well you gotta well, make sure these things don't fly away yeah, go ahead. Do, do 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 we want to go in a, and and grab one of those cables and see if we can cause a little issue, cause a little <sighs> trouble? We're not done with this plan yet, are we? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the the the, the thopters are gone. Yeah, they're, I don't really. They're flying yeah, away. it's it's I about as I done as it gets. Yeah. yeah. Catch them. All right. All right. We'll just <laughs> to aerial combat is your decision. Let's just. I've look. never tried it, but uh, <laughs> I think. I think I could do it. Oh yeah. Are we, no are, we pass. are we heading into <laughs> our copter to our thopter yeah. to also look at our area? Right, yeah. yeah so kind of just we moving ahead, probably, the people yeah. start spreading. They get into their thopters. Uh, they start heading off into the distance. Everyone seems to be going pretty much a different direction. Um, do we yes. feel we yeah. know what we're looking for? We got a we got a friend in with us. Yeah, right, right here. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if the the Imperial, at least, I don't think had clearly said what we're scouting for, or what's high value or low value. Right. So the uh, the understanding Fun. that you get is is basically your job uh, on this survey is to survey the mechanisms, pretty much. Try like kind of to report back on what it would cost, what these areas look like. Would this be difficult? Is your is your house ready to step forward? Um, more than like finding if this is region is good for spice or not. Okay. If that makes yeah. sense. Yep. Oh, um, I can help cool. ascertain that information. Do not worry, doctor. <laughs> I feel good about our chances. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, nobody excellent. saw us screw up. That's like, that's not like, a, you know, that's... No one saw us <laughs> try to no. sabotage them. Not at all. Yeah, nobody saw our mistake. Uh -oh. You did well. Uh, except us. Um, and I literally can't forget. So... To the desert! All right. <laughs> To the desert. I just smacked my microphone. You you sail away, right, off into the sky, uh, wings flapping as, as you start heading forward. Um, and soon enough, I mean, well, you know, it takes you a, an hour or so of flight as you're going across. You watch the ground, but it's just, you're not seeing much down there. Every once in a while, uh, you mm -hmm. see more rocks um, that provide a little bit of shade. You know, maybe there's some caves in there. Um, Harmoon probably picking up on some places you might, rest if you were wandering through this part of the desert um but uh but after them all out nice <laughs> <laughs> but after an hour um you see up in the sky kind of in the, the clouds above well never mind the sky above there's no clouds i just like clouds um <laughs> um there is this kind of, you know, it almost looks like a sky fortress. This thing flying up in the air is it's pretty massive. It's a uh, it's spewing um a little bit of smoke behind it as it travels. It's kind of just hovering um, uh, up there in the air, slowly moving around um, up ahead. And Obregon points to it, right? Because you know our friend Obregon is here with us as well um, oh, yeah. <laughs> in seat number six. Um, <laughs> she's been telling you about this area as you've been traveling through. You know, pointing things out as well. Like um, you know, our harvesters head through here on occasion, like pointing out some of the rocks nearby, and we found good uh, good spice around here. Um, tells you a little bit Can about I it we'll talk, talk more about that her? tomorrow yes um, <laughs> i want to talk over her a little bit and be like but, uh, no i do recall a time uh, where a sandworm destroyed yeah. some of your harvesters there yeah mm -hmm. that's um, um well yes but uh um, remember the we, death of 20 rebuilt and then uh, oh that's right that's right but then then we hired some more workers and then they they, they got out in mm. another harvester and and uh mm -hmm. well we almost and made, made our profits back yeah Mm. I see, I see mm -hmm. what Parman's doing here, like neg <laughs> negging this new person in the group to establish their place. And I like absolutely <laughs> formed the alliance. And I'm like, yeah, I think I remember that. And but, I think I would remember, uh, you know, if anybody would. So I'm just like validating, backing up everything you're saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, oh, those uh, rocks? I, I don't think. No, no. Yeah. Oof, yikes. Over there? No. Guys, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, Obergon gets like uh, more and more quiet as it goes on. You can sense like the the dullness in her voice, and then eventually she's like, w "Wait, aha! Th there we are!" And looks uh, and, and on the horizon, you you do see this floating ship, um, blowing smoke into the sky. She points and goes, "There it is, the grief." 
we're here. Good. Um, yes, indeed. The grief. The grief. Um, and I, oops, I'll even share this image with my players. Ooh. Let's see if that Ooh. worked out. Oh, um, yeah, that did. There's, we have Great. so many different ways to talk uh, to each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, which way? Right. Okay. Oh, this so, rules. It's like a little, I'm just going to break, just to break the, there's a little, we got a little thing that says player art handout, and it has mm -hmm. like the ship. It's like a mm -hmm. art of it. It's very nice to look at. It's got this, uh, this, this is like a massive landing bay on top of the ship uh, as it is floating around. I mean, the, what you're looking at here is, uh, I mean, for, for size reference, not quite an aircraft carrier, but, you know, it's that kind of, of massive object floating around. Um, and there are different sorts of, of ships that you see all over the place. We see, like, thopters all around this landing bay with its wings on the sides. Um, and, uh, right, uh, Obergon has you kind of fly over some of those. A lot of those spaces seem filled and says, well, we got some of the... Uh, you know the 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 older school landing spots uh, over here near the the aft of the ship, uh, and as you fly over and uh, as you kind of like pause, you look up and you see that there are these these clamps on the edge of the ship, um, and uh, Agent Brad Montana recognizes those for sure. Those have been out of favor for a long time. You like fly up and clamp clamps. the nose of your ship onto that, and then climb out. <laughs> um, you know. Parking on the level would have been better, but uh, it seems like this is what you're up for. And she's like, yes, that's that's perfect. That'll get us very closely so we can talk to my boss up there. All right. Is, is, there, a, is there a chance your boss would let us use the regular landing, perhaps? Well, <laughs> I mean... Uh, uh, it's probably better that you use one of these. I mean, uh, some of those platforms are, are a little full right now. Some of those ships can't really move. I mean, uh, it, hold I wish, on, everyone. Here we it, go. We haven't, we haven't really cleaned up, and then like <laughs> ship flies <laughs> upwards. Um, <laughs> uh, it heads up, and definitely as it gets in, it just like there's a clip sound. Uh, you hear these things like suction on, and then uh, and then you just power down, and the ship just kind of tilts backwards. <laughs> um, and everyone is now just facing straight up. There's a ladder that'll lead you uh, <laughs> up to the top and onto the ship. Uh, you see a couple other thopters that are here in kind of a similar position. It's not, you know, the nicest <laughs> yeah, way to are land. These, these are not the nicer thopters, right, compared to the ones no. in the good. Okay, all right. Just you want to make sure I'm you, taking you the tenor of how we're being yeah. treated based on how, like, evaluating. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Oh, God. Oh, right. no, we're, we're in a nicer thopter because we're, we're, we're in my thopter. Yes. Right. It's still oh, so crap. But the other ones around it's here, crap, but no, it's nice. they haven't. They, yeah. they're that one looks broken. You're not sure if that one's gone anywhere in like a couple of years. It's kind of covered in sand that's blown through in storms. Not great. Um, but um, soon enough, yeah. And go ahead. can I just say that uh, I will have put on my still suit on the ride over, probably before then, even. Yeah. Uh, because Obregon had still suits for all of us, right? Yes, yeah. She handed those okay. to each of you. They are quality level zero, so okay. uh, so Parmoons is better. I, the doctors, yeah. I don't, I don't think is better. <laughs> I think it's also about quality zero. Um, so they won't give you benefits, <laughs> but they will allow you to survive out there. Okay. Um, and as you get yeah. out and and kind of onto this this platform onto the grief, um, you look around and it is first of all loud. You're in this like mechanical engine zone. Um, there's people moving around. Some of them are wearing. Um, I mean, they they seem like they're in the engines where it's really hot, so they're not wearing their their still suits. But other people have them like kind of the the tops pulled down, tied around their waist, things like that, uh, so they can put them on quickly if they need to. Um, but it seems like there must be food and you know plenty of water on here. But they're also always worried about it. Um, none of them look great, and I would say probably to Parmoon's eyes, um, this is like a travesty. This is <laughs> this is not how you survive oh, on this planet. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I am shit but... talking with like our code the whole mm -hmm. time too. I asked for <laughs> anybody who will listen. Most I'm, like, I'm listening. Like, oh, like I'm always, listening always. I'm well, always ready to hear that conversation for sure. I asked Parmoon so. <laughs> Uh, tell me, yes, what what exactly is going on here? Why is this, why do you think it's like this? Oh, living on Dune is incredibly 
rough and frankly not a lot of people have the resolve to survive the maintenance that it takes to not only take to not only support your own body but the external suit that will house your body folks don't have the resolve to take care of both and mm. so and like they'll gesture all around them this happens mm -hmm. that is fear a lot of fear mm. it's just kind of gross you know I mean, it's. I get it. I get it. It's just. A, it's oh, a I little gross. No offense. Nice. Sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I mean like the the like suit the and the, mm -hmm. the 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 poop packets on the thighs. I, I don't like that part. <laughs> it's a detail I especially oh, I don't God. especially love. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, do, wait, do you guys not have those on yours? Like, I put mine on when you guys were doing the plan. I'm like touching. I'm like, <laughs> did was this? Did you clean these not before we were? <laughs> Uh, welcome to the grief. Uh, <laughs> climbed up the ladder really quick. <laughs> Drinking somebody else's electrolytes. The, the, fil <laughs> the filters are pretty good. Don't mm -hmm. don't worry. <laughs> um, and with that, we'll uh, we'll wrap as you you enter the grief. You look around this just constant sense of disarray, loudness, uh, kind of terrible. Especially after your lovely, um, entertaining farming world your spice world i mean what a what a lovely place and now you are just mm -hmm. here in the bowels of this massive ridiculous ship um which is where we'll begin next time <laughs> uh oh, for yeah. part two of this adventure um you are safely uh here on the grief and uh weren't able to sabotage the harkonnens um so they'll still be monsters in the future the that's all right mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. sting was on one of those you know um who knows what the story would have been from there um <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But as we wrap up, I'm really excited to continue this adventure with all of you. This is great. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, but it is time to go. So I want to make sure we get folks there in the chat to uh, this is your last chance to sign up for the raffle for a free copy of the Dune Adventures in the Imperium PDF um, from Modiphius. Uh, exclamation mark raffle and then a number to, uh, to enter the raffle with a certain number of tickets and Dom's going to take care of that those winners in moments um, but before that folks um, thank you so much for joining us um, on another adventure um, where can we find you on the internet um, over the next week I'm very curious I mean last time holy cow there were so many things um, <laughs> starting uh, starting with Elisa Pearl <laughs> oh, uh, well, this is, yeah, this is a busy weekend for me because, or week, actually, I should say. This Thursday, uh, we're coming back with new a new campaign of Tales of Zadia, uh, continuing our little ongoing story that we're doing. Um, it's going to be on, ooh, babe, in my brain. Okay, it's going to be on Phantom Tabletop's Twitch channel. Uh, that's going to be Thursday, and then Saturday I'm doing Lords of Faerun, which is the campaign that I dungeon master uh, over at Kira858. And then, what else? There's a bunch of stuff. Monday is my monthly Klingon game, Blood of the Void, over at Q Times. And then, actually, you can watch me stream Witcher 3 right after this stream. I'm going to hop Ooh. off of this one and into that one. And that'll be <laughs> wow, at Ripley nice. Improv's Twitch channel. That's my improv group. Very nice. Fantastic. Beak, where can we find you this week? Yeah, what's up, y'all? I am your busy non-binary B. You can find me on Twitter. It's at P underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, a member of the Broadsword, the D&D Actual Play podcast. I host Anime Attaché. We are going through season one of My Hero Academia, teaching two newbies about how amazing anime is. Uh, Power Play <laughs> is also available wherever you listen to podcasts. That is a game of superheroes where I play a robot slash alien who just loves plants. I am a rather busy streamer. Honestly, you'll have to follow me on Twitter to catch my schedule and stay tuned for any writing that I'm going to be doing soon. Oh, incredible. Spoilers. I love it. A little teaser. Um, fantastic. Um, moving down. Cohen, where can we find you this week? Uh, you can find me at, at Skull Mandible on Twitter. You can also find me at twitch.tv twitch slash gameworms. That's worm with a U. Every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, finished death stranding last week uh it was really fun actually i'm just gonna real much with the one of the voice actors showed up at the like it was just a, oh, wow. it was a good time yeah it was, it was a hoot. uh but Very it just nice. started subnautica got a new ship going uh building Ooh. i don't know what the deal of the game is about so far but playing that every morning at 8 a.m uh for a couple hours eastern uh also if that's a little too early at noon uh doing stuff with my buddy casey green uh wednesday thursday friday uh noon eastern so 
Twitch TV, and if that is too, I'm gonna drop a link to the to the YouTube just in case. That's very nice, very nice. I can do that. So, oh, Agent Brad Montana, where can we find you on the internet? <laughs> oh man! All right, so uh, yeah, I was I was trying to take some notes. Um, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, you'll find me on the internet this week. I've been having a lot of computer issues. I've, I've uh, I'll be working on that the rest of this evening. Uh, but should my plans go appropriately, you will see me tomorrow on my own channel at DJ Pirate Rabbits, um, and we will be either watching. Uh, I'm, I'm debating between Man Trap with uh, Clara Bow and uh, Ernest Torrance from 1925. <laughs> or uh, up the ladder also from 1925. Uh, uh, that's uh, directed by D.W. Griffith. Um, they're silent films, so we'll watch those, and I'll play house. I'll DJ house music over it. Uh, so nice. that's tomorrow. So long as I get my computer sorted, then I'll be streaming as my normal streams also at 10:30 uh, or at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. I'll be doing uh, house music and brunch, where we'll listen to some funky house and talk about breakfast food. And then uh, hopefully Owlbear Soup will be back on this Sunday uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so long as all of the computers get sorted, right. which I think I think they will. But, you know, I'm just in a grumpy mood right now because no, things aren't working at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. Hoping oh, my for gosh. The best. Yes. Um, and Teos, first of all, congratulations are in order. Um, congrats on your latest adventure. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was fortunate enough to write Seed, uh, the sequel to Siege of Castle Ren called The Regent of Bedagar, which is the adventure included in the MCDM huge Kickstarter book that just came out um, mm -hmm. called Kingdoms, Kingdoms and Warfare. Uh, already hearing nice comments about it, so I'm excited. It's in the store. You can get it. It was a lot of work, a lot of words. Um, <laughs> It's also been another fun thing to see my episode where I was a guest on the Tome Show. We did a deep dive looking at chapter six of the Dungeon Master's Guide and arguing oh. what Dungeon Master's Guide we like best and why and what we do like or don't <laughs> like about this chapter. Uh, it mm -hmm. is near Fourth and dear to my heart. The because best Dungeon feels... Master Guide. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, fourth edition was the best. It's true. Uh, but... Uh, we also talked about downtime, which is one of my favorite topics out there. And last, I'll quickly mention that on the Mastering Dungeons podcast this week, we had an incredible guest. I'm not saying this at all because uh, it was B. Zelda, and they're right here. What? But yes. <laughs> uh, hey. Sean Merwin was off. Wrangling Monsters. <laughs> B was on there. We had a great time. That's fantastic. I'm so glad to hear it. Um, it was fabulous. You are all amazing folks. Um, and of course, my name is Rich. You can find me uh, very quickly. If you've got any kids out there, ages 11 to 15, looking to learn how to play D&D &D and play uh, a year full of adventures, my after school program is opening up for admissions right at the start of August. So you'll see some links there. Other than that, come check out Owlbear Soup, where I can't shut up. Um, and with that, I think that's about it for uh, for us uh, and our wonderness. Um, Dom, can we find out who won three copies of the Dune RPG here in the chat? Did it happen? Did it happen already? I'm so excited. Pipe, 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 pipe. I'm checking chat. There it is. Hey. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, our first one is going out to Uneasier Davey. Congratulations. Uh, K386IMJ has won a copy, as well as Atma Prime. Woo! Um, read those books, but not too closely, especially stuff about an adventure at any point. Although <laughs> everything we've done today is not in that adventure. <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us on this this uh, this epic quest to Arrakis. We'll see uh, how the survey mission goes. Probably fine uh, over the next two weeks. Um, yeah. <laughs> right um i hope we see you all again next time right here on saving throw at 5 30 for the next episode of the rpg exploration society good night everybody bye Peace out.